Mitchell, we have one hour exactly to film this video. Hurry. Let's make it happen. Let's go. Nice walleye here. Pop jig and some shallows. We're gonna need a net in this one, Mitchell. This is a beauty favorite area walleye. You getting net this fish for me or no? It's right there. Those are the ones we're after. You know, we just had that huge cold front go through, and uh, you know it's the first day, and I honestly did not think these fish were gonna pop back up shallow, but lo and behold, they did. They're back up shallow, and we're catching a whole bunch of walleyes today. All right, guys, there it is. First little walleye of the afternoon there. The quality fish, probably 23 inch Hayward area walleye. That one came out one of my absolute favorite pop jig and baits. I've talked about it a whole ton on social media, but that's the Kalen's Jerk Minnow Jr. Just a super effective bait for twitching up in the shallows. You know, you can work them soft, you can work them hard. Um, and there's a beautiful Hayward area walleye right there. We're gonna dump that guy back, hopefully show you a few more and uh, talk about exactly where we're finding these fish and uh, maybe some specifics on boat control and how you wanna put your boat and uh, how you can come out here and catch a whole bunch of these same fish. All right, so now we're gonna talk about where we're fishing, basically. You know, this is the time of year where we wanna work a lot of shallow water structure. It's springtime, it's May. We'll probably run a, a similar pattern out until probably mid-June, early June, uh, and then fish start sliding off again. But we're looking for a lot of shallow water structure, whether that's rock on these natural lakes or weeds. So uh, basically what we're gonna fish right now is a rock point. Now, when you're looking for a rock point, um, or when you're looking for good rock on a spot, basically you're driving around and you're looking on your side imaging, and you want to see something that looks like this right here. Now this is the high spot of this point we're about to fish, and you can see the rock runs right down the middle of it. Need to clear my throat. So, you can see the rock runs right down the middle of it, it's right in the high spot here. Now this isn't like a 500 yard type spot, this isn't like a quarter mile type spot. It's a very small isolated piece of structure, and these walleyes are relating right to the tip of this point. They're not up in one foot, they want to be in that deeper rock, on this point, which is like in eight to 12 feet of water. So when I run over the Swiss side imaging, you can see this unique cluster of rocks right here on this corner, right before it fades out to deeper water and I get start getting less and less rock. So that's where we wanna focus. We wanna put a waypoint on that spot, spot lock up for wind from it, and spend some time working that corner. If there's walleyes on this spot, they're gonna be right there. And uh, that's how we wanna target this style of piece of structure. Oh, geez. Didn't even let that thing get the spot in yet. Walleye? Yeah, it's not really big. I think it's a walleye. I think it's a 10 pounds. 10 pound walleye? It's a 10 pounder. Nice walleye. Alright, 10 pounds. But uh, these are do. respectable 17, 18. 16. Oh, no, dude, that's, that's a Hayward eater all day long if I've ever seen one. And I've seen a few before. All right, second fish of the evening. Tom's over here using uh, Kalen's jerk minnow. I'm using live bait on the jig, quarter ounce jig. Last, what, the last week has been pretty cold, so we've been using jigging a minnow, working it really slow, and today they're actually livening it back up. So here's a nice little eater, toss him back. Are we eating that one? Yeah, toss him back in the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so real quick, we're going to talk about how you work one of my absolute favorite baits for pop jigging or just fishing shallow, fishing deep. You can fish it all over the place. You can fish it a ton of different ways. I'm going to show you basically a few ways that I fish that. Uh, that's a Kalen's Google Eye Jig quarter ounce. Qu quarter ounce I use a lot, um, like 15 feet of water and less. Now, going deeper than that, I'm using 3 8 or half. Um, and shallower than, that, shallower than about, I'd say, five feet, I'm going eighth ounce. The Google Eye Jig, the reason I like it, it's got a rattle in it. It's got a real sharp, good wire hook on there. So a lot of times when you're pop jigging, if you don't get a good hook set, that wire hook has a lot of penetration. It also has a really good bait keeper on there. You can see it's got a wire bait keeper, holds the plastic real well. So when I get that threaded on there, basically what I'm doing, I'm making a cast, getting it out there nice and far. And I'm going all the way down to bottom. Once I am on the bottom, when it's real cold out, real early in the year, the way I like to fish, or when fish are real negative, a lot of times I'll just take and I'll just pop my rod tip just like that right there. I'm not even moving the bait with the rod, I'm just playing with the slack in the line. And basically what that's doing, it's taking that bait 
and it's just kind of making it go like that on the bottom. It's not pulling the bait up off the bottom. It's just making it kind of twitch, you know, maybe within three inches of the bottom. And then every couple twitches, I'll just pause for a second and make sure that it is right on the bottom. So I keep it real close. This time of year, kind of this middle of this, you know, middle of the road, we got water temps that are like 53. I do a lot of kind of fishing like this. I'll take it and just pop it real short like that. Wait till it hits bottom. Pop it real short like that pop it real short like that. I'm not keeping a super tight line when the bait falls because I still want it to kind of get erratic and that's how I'm fishing that. I'm popping it, let it hit bottom, pop it, let it hit bottom, pop it, let it hit bottom. I'll show you my rod tip for a second. I'm doing all my reeling when the bait's on the bottom. I'm not reeling as I'm popping it. I'm doing all my reeling when I go down to pop it again. And it's about half a reel turn I'd say about that simple. Now in the middle of summer, once these fish get real active, get out in a little bit deeper water, or in a couple weeks here when I start working heavy cabbage, I'm gonna really fish this thing real hard and aggressive. And I'll get it out there, let it go all the way down to bottom, just like all the other presentations. And I'm doing is I'm really cracking that rod tip. And I'm holding my rod tip up, my line's gonna have a slight bow in the line because I'm hitting the bait so hard, and pop it again like that. It's a real quick wrist movement, and you're trying to hit that bait on a slack line so it has a real fast snap. It's real good to trigger fish. Uh, it's a big time triggering mechanism. You know, it's not like, it's a lot like fishing a snap bait um, or like a like a jig and wrap style of lure. You want that real aggressive. Ooh, we might have actually had a bite there or it was a rock, but it's a real aggressive way to fish. Most of the time, those fish will bite it on the way down. Sometimes they're gonna pop the bait while it's laying on the bottom of the lake. So that's kind of the two ways um, that fit, you get bites doing that. Super versatile bait. You can fish a ton of different ways. Like I said, today the way I'm fishing, I'm just taking that rod popping it kind of middle of the range as far as how hard I'm going to pop a bait throughout the season let it hit bottom pop it again a lot of times when you're doing this you won't feel the fish go think you're going to pop it again you're going to feel that mush weight on there and that's a fish just trapping the bait right to bottom they have it in their mouth they're just pinning it right to bottom because it is kind of a fast way to fish um, it's a great replacement for live bait you can bomb it a long ways you can fish it fast you don't have to deal with replacing it for a fluke style bait this thing has a ton of action uh, like I said super versatile bait you guys should give them a shot um, they're absolutely one of my favorites anywhere I go throughout the season. Dude, this. Hooked up, Mitchell! <laughs> Got a fish on! Net. Uh, <laughs> net. Again? Yes, Mitchell. Your boy's on him. What do you got, crappie? Oh, it's another, another one of them good old Hayward walleyes. You gonna scoop the up and stuff? Oh. <laughs> I just swore on camera. Oops. All right guys, another beautiful walleye right there. You know, we've only been out here fishing for probably 10-15 minutes now. Got three nice fish in the boat. I missed one already. Um, so obviously fishing's pretty good right now. Uh, you know, these Hayward walleyes, it's it's a very small, very basically, you're trying to fish a very specific, specific spot. And that's why a lot of times we use a lot of spot locking um, to, you know, kind of make repetitive casts to that same area. We don't have the size of structure where you can just float across it, fan cast and catch fish. So that's a lot of times what we really have to dial in on these real specific structures. There's another about 22 inch right there. Kalen's jerk minnow, we're gonna let that guy go. All right guys, so real quick, I'm gonna talk about rod and reel combos. I get asked a ton of questions on YouTube, what kind of rod and reels I like to run for this kind of stuff. Pretty much all my jig fishing, um, all my jig and wrap stuff, um, all my rip and wrap stuff, every, pretty much any kind of casting walleye presentation, I run one of two spinning rods. The number one rod I use, and what I think is probably the most versatile rod I've run, and I've ran it for a few years now, is a St. Croix Mojo Bass 610 MLXF spinning. This is a medium light rod, it's six foot 10 inches long, it's got a, a, a softer tip, but a lot of backbone on this. Even though it's a medium light rod, I'll use this a lot in like Green Bay or Sturgeon Bay when I'm catching, you know, 10, 12 pound walleye. Um, it's got a lot of backbone, super sensitive rod. They redesigned these rods maybe four or five years ago, and for 120, 130 bucks, they're probably the best bang for your buck uh, um, jig fishing rod you can find. I know they say Mojo Bass on them, but I've been using them for walleye fishing for years. Phenomenal walleye rod. Uh, St. Croix Mojo Bass there. So this is the 610. This is the one I use for most of my jig fishing stuff. Now if I'm gonna go to something, you know what, I might be making a super, super long cast or I'm fishing something a little bit heavier or sometimes guys just like a, a, a more powerful rod. This is a 6'8 medium extra fast. Um, it's a little bit shorter rod, a lot more backbone in this rod. You have a lot less play in the tip. Like if you, I don't know if we can see this Mitchell, but I'm gonna load this tip up here. Do you see that at all? You can see the bend in that tip right there. That's that 6.8, and I'll take this rod, here's the 6.10 medium light, and I'll double that one over. And you can see how that bend goes farther down the rod. A little bit longer rod, that 6.10. It's got a little bit more play in the tip. 
those are the two rods I like the most. If you like fishing with a little bit more stout of a rod, that 6.8 is the one to go with. If you like fishing with more of a medium light, like I do most of the time, um, I like going with that 6.10 medium light extra fast. For sure, for like quarter ounce or under stuff, definitely that 6.10. Um, and I think that rod's probably a little bit more versatile. Now reels, I've been running the same reels now for basically a whole year. This is the Pissy Fun Carbon X 2000. It's a super fast reel, it's super light. They're an online company, it's pretty much all wholesale still, I believe. Um, great reels, I think you can get these reels online for like 72 bucks, and they honestly fish like $150, $200 reel. Super awesome reels, especially for the money. I've been running these things in brutal conditions, uh, freezing stuff um, for a whole year now and have no problems. They're super fast, they're super light. 10 ball bearings in these guys, you guys will not be disappointed. It's honestly the best $70 you can spend on a reel. Success? Yeah, I'd say for 30, 45 minutes we spent out there. My biggest concern is that people are gonna get bored of hearing informational content. That I'm gonna sit at the same number of viewers constantly. Not that I'm just in it for the viewers, because it's all about, you know, making one person's day, right? But, you know, like, do people find information, like, exciting? Or is everybody on YouTube just there for like, to see some ridiculous crap go down? I just, I can't even concentrate right now. You're just holding that. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? It's not bad to litter a banana peel, is it? I don't think so. I mean, I always throw them out the window. You did anyways. 